is Friday, April 19th, and um, something grabbed me last weekend. I, I ended up catching a movie that I hadn't seen in like 20 years, maybe 30. came out in 1980 or so, I think. Yeah, so it could have been, probably, probably the last time I saw it completely was in the theater. And, uh, um, and it reminded me of a few songs I used to play. And essential guitar playing. I mean, essential listening for guitar players. Who has this album? Everybody recognize it? This came out, I believe, in 1977. Could have been 78. Um, and knocked me out. Guy Van Duzer. Um, just called American Fingerstyle Guitar. Or, ah, Fingerstyle Guitar Solos. Got re-released on CD with a, had a nice little, you know, embroidery on the back cover and stuff. And some great tunes. Guy's stuff sounds a lot like Chet Atkins. And, um... Like, uh, he does a version of Chattanooga Choo Choo that is really different than mine. Um, yeah, it's very, oh, there's no swing to it. That's what it is. Can't, I can't do it. I just, when, when I hear, think about Chattanooga Choo Choo, it's got to go like this. Um, Uh-oh, let me think. This is on one of my albums, um, Yesterday's News. It's coming back. That's one verse. That's probably enough. I should not push my luck. practice enough chit chatting here about uh, oh I was gonna talk about well nah, let me let me let me divert back into something like totally useless and random um, we had a few new lessons this week um, they were uh, it was like ladies day ladies week everything with one exception Jamie Johnson 
um, in color that was part of Kevin's fly on the wall. Everything else was female artists. We had Kevin looking at Meant to Be, and uh, then Etta James at last, thanks to Max. Aretha Franklin, also thanks to Max. And uh, Vanessa brought us the bangles of a, a Prince tune, the um, uh, Manic Monday. So hope everybody's had a good time taking a look at those kind of unusual things. And um, what else? Oh, we had a, a new pack come out, a uh, Pearl Jam pack. So, and that, you know, God, there are some great Pearl Jam songs. one um. anyway better man was even an answer to Je a jeopardy question this week hope everybody's been watching jeopardy it's been pretty amazing with what is going on with uh james holtzauer anyway okay but i should I, I, I don't need to be talking about that um but pretty pretty stunning for Je jeopardy fans to uh so tune in tonight if you haven't in the last week or two um if this is up by tonight if not, catch it Monday. He'll still be around. Pretty pretty sure on that. Um, what I was going to talk about was the this this guy Van Duzer album because and uh, there is a great piece on there. Well, there's a whole bunch of great pieces. Uh, what else did he do? Uh, Colored Aristocracy. Um, oh, which I can't remember. But that was I learned that out of my uh, um, uh, the contemporary ragtime guitar book that I got when I was just like out of high school or something, 1972 or 73 or something like that. Great book that included a song that changed my life. songs that I haven't like looked at in months or years I think I, that's that one's probably been only six months but Dallas Rag also anyway had a version of colored aristocracy in there what is else else is on this ain't she sweet oh man time ago I've, I've told this story before but something that really got me into um, old time songs from like the 20s and 30s was this book that seems to have disappeared called it called uh, golden standards of the 1900s big thick fake book it was the first fake book i ever got and i remember going through there and, and playing stuff like I think I, I probably had a dozen of these ragtime Tin Pan Alley tunes that I, and Ain't Misbehaving, no, Ain't Misbehaving was not yet one of them. I put that together later. Um, Ain't She Sweet, the one that I just saw here on, on uh, his album, on Chet. Let's see, what else did, oh, and he did Sweet Georgia Brown. And as time goes by, uh. <laughs>
there's no way I'm going to be able to piece, piece that one back together right now, or it'll just take me too long. We're gonna, we got a time limit here today. Um, it's starting to heat up. I'm, I got to this pretty, pretty late today, and it's starting to cook here in California. So not much. And I moved back out into the studio again. Now that the rains have stopped, I may be getting more, more videos back out here. We'll see how. Got it. I'm working on a cool one. That might, uh, one of my students has introduced me to a song I hadn't heard. Killer. Okay, but I'll, I'll save that for, for next week. Um, what else is on here? And then the whole reason I dug this up was because of the movie. I know, I've been kept, kept you really in, in serious suspense. So this weekend, what came on as I was flipping around the sports, a lot of sports going on this weekend, but the Blues Brothers. And I hadn't sat through the whole movie probably in, like I said, 40 years. But there are unforgettable scenes and scenes I'd totally forgotten about. Carrie Fisher with the rocket launcher. And, um, yeah, and the sewer scenes. And Belushi's eyes. And, of course, this. Guy Van Duser's Great Western TV Medley. So this was such a cool thing when it came out. There were seven or eight, I think officially eight, um, different tunes that he put together in a medley, and this baffled everybody that I knew back when it came out because most of these were out like before I was watching. I really never watched. You know, Westerns I did see were Bonanza and The Big Valley. That was like the next generation. I miss things like The Rifleman and Gunsmoke and and um, other other stuff like that, uh, but these these the tunes in this medley. What was next after Rawhide? Oh, I shouldn't give it away. The question is going to be: Listen to it. I'll put a link to it here on this on the page with the news, and see how many of these you can identify. What happens after Rawhide? We go into this. wasn't exactly right. Then there's this one. This is one I can't pin down. I can't, I don't know, I probably won't have the melody right. Okay, then there's this. missing one but pretty soon we have this this one is beautiful right there. We're in C. And instead of landing on C, lands on a chord not in the key of C, but a chord that includes the note C. 
So, good little trivia question. How is that chord related to the key of C, and why do we land there? Way too weird. And then we probably do something like this. As an ending. There's one more. I don't think I'm going to be able to get through all of this one, though. back and listen to that and figure these out but these would make good uh, I think this would make some good lessons we'll learn some of Guy Van Duzer's arrangements of Western TV songs there's oh man let me think because that wasn't very close to how it really went. Gotta go listen to all of these. I have all kinds of other things I should be doing, but somehow when I get motivated and inspired to, to work on weird, obscure tunes, I just gotta pursue it. Okay, so that's, um, that's about all I had to say today, which is really not much, but I hope you were uh, okay kind of with this little journey through the past of, of tunes that I used to like to play. Uh, in any case, I hope everybody has a, uh, a fun musical weekend. And next week, we will be, it will be next Friday, the official 10th anniversary of our <laughs> ridiculously long TG Live, where Matt and, Matt and I and my friend Bruce and a few others were, were back in the other office <clears throat> in, in, the, in the house. And um, just the shenanigans that went on for five and a half hours. So um, it's all available here still at Totally Guitars. I don't recommend you set aside five and a half hours to watch it. A lot of glitches in there too. We'd go down for five minutes at a time. So that would be a good time to get up and, you know, have a snack and watch a baseball game or something. So, okay, I will be back next week. <laughs>